Hi guys, I'm back. We're gonna have some fun. Um, I brought a book called Purple, Green, and Yellow. And this is a Robert Munch book. It's written by Robert Munch. He did the story. And although most of Robert Munch's books are illustrated by Michael Marchenko, this one is not. So it, the pictures might look a little different than you're used to when, we, when you read a Robert Munch book. The uh, illustrator is a woman named Hélène Desputo. And this book is called Purple, Green, and Yellow. So let's see what it's about. Look at the cover there. She's standing in a mountain of something. Can you see what that is? Purple, green, and yellow. It's about a little girl named Bridget. Bridget went to her mom and said, I need some coloring markers. All my friends have coloring markers. They draw wonderful pictures. Mummy, I need some coloring markers. Oh no, said her mother. I've heard about those coloring markers. Kids draw on walls, they draw on the floor, they draw on themselves. You cannot have any coloring markers. You wouldn't do those things. You know markers are for paper. I don't think Bridget would either. Well, said Bridget, these are new coloring markers. They wash off with just water. I can't get into any trouble with coloring markers that wash off. Please get me some of those. Well, said her mother, all right. So her mother went out and got Bridget 500 washable coloring markers. Bridget went up to her room and drew wonderful pictures. She drew lemons that were yellower than lemons and roses that were redder than roses and oranges that were oranger than oranges. Those are some nice bright colors with those markers. Her mother was a wet amazed. She said, wow, my kid is an artist. But after a week, Bridget got bored. She went to her mother and said, Mom, did I draw on the wall? No, said her mother. Did I draw on the floor? No, said her mother. Did I draw on myself? No, said her mother. Do you know where she's going with this? I think I do. Well, said Bridget, I didn't get it into any trouble and I need some new coloring markers. All my friends have them. Mommy, there are coloring markers that smell. They have ones that smell like roses and lemons and oranges and even ones that smell like cow plops. <laughs> Mom, they have coloring markers that smell like anything you want. Mom, I need those coloring markers. Her mother went out and got 500 coloring markers that smelled. Then Bridget went upstairs and she drew pictures. She drew lemons that smelled like lemons and roses that smelled like roses and oranges that smelled like oranges and cow plops that smelled like cow plops. Ew. Her mother said, wow. My kid is an artist. But after a week, Bridget got bored. She said, Mom, did I draw on the floor? No, said her mother. And did I draw on the walls? No. And did I draw on myself? No, said her mother. Well, said Bridget, I need some new coloring markers. These are the best kind. All my friends have them. They're super indelible, never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring markers. Mom, I need them. Indelible means they won't wash off. And she's saying, they'll never wash off maybe. 
but her mom went out and got 500 super indelible, never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring markers. Bridget took them and drew pictures for three weeks. She drew lemons that looked better than lemons and roses that looked better than roses and oranges that looked better than oranges and sunsets that looked better than sunsets. Then she got bored. Then she got bored. She said, I'm tired of drawing on the paper, but I'm not going to draw on the walls and I'm not going to draw on the floor and I'm not going to draw on myself. But everybody knows it's okay to color your fingernails. Even my mother colors her fingernails. So Bridget took a purple super indelible never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring marker and she colored her thumbnail bright purple. And that was so pretty that she colored all of her fingernails, purple, black, and yellow. And that was so pretty. She colored her hands, yellow, green, and red. She's kind of got rainbow hands now. And that was so pretty. She colored her face, purple, green, yellow, and blue. And that was so pretty. She colored her belly button blue. And that was so pretty. She colored herself all sorts of colors, almost entirely all over. Hmm. I do not think her mother's going to be very happy now. Then Bridget looked in the mirror and said, what have I done? My mother is going to kill me. So she ran into the bathroom and washed her hands for half an hour, but nothing came off. Her hands still looked like mixed up rainbows. Mm. Then she had a wonderful idea. She reached way down to the bottom of the coloring markers and got a special colored marker. It was the same color as she was. She took that marker and colored herself all over until she was her regular color again. In fact, she looked even better than before, almost too good to be true. She went downstairs and her mother said, why, Bridget, you're looking really good today. Right, said Bridget. Then her mother said, it's time to wash your hands for dinner. But Bridget was afraid that the special color would not stick to the colors underneath. So she said, I already washed my hands. And that was true because she washed them for half an hour. But her mother smelled her hands and said, ah, no soap. She took Bridget into the bathroom and watched, washed her hands and face. All the special color came off and Bridget looked like mixed up rainbows. Oh, no, said her mother. Bridget, did you color your hands with the coloring markers that wash off? No. Bridget, did you color your hands with the coloring markers that smell? No. Bridget, did you use the super indelible never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring markers? Yes, said Bridget. Yikes, said her mother. So she called the doctor. And she said, help, help, help. My daughter has colored herself with super indelible, never come off till you're dead and maybe even longer coloring markers. Oh dear, said the doctor. Sometimes they never come off. The doctor came over and gave Bridget a large orange pill. She said, take this pill wait five minutes and then take a bath. So Bridget took the pill, waited five minutes and jumped into the bathtub. Her mother stood outside the door and yelled, is it working? Is it working? Yes, said Bridget. Everything is coming off. And Bridget was right. Everything had come off. When Bridget walked out of the bathroom, she was invisible. Oh no, yelled her mother. 
You can't go to school if you're invisible. You can't go to university if you're invisible. You'll never get a job if you're invisible. Bridget, you have ruined your life. Pretty harsh. Don't worry, said Bridget. She ran into her room, got the special colored marker, and colored herself entirely all over until she couldn't tell the difference. In fact, she looked even better than before. Almost too good to be true. But her mother said, Bridget, you can't go through life like that. You're just a pitcher. Everyone will know there's something wrong. No, they won't, said Bridget. Yes, they will, said her mother. Uh, no, they won't, said Bridget. I colored Daddy while he was taking a nap, and you haven't noticed anything yet. Good heavens, yelled her mother, and she ran into the living room and looked at Daddy. He looked even better than before, almost too good to be true. Doesn't he look great, said Bridget. I couldn't even tell the difference, said her mother. Right, said Bridget, and neither will he. Uh-oh. As long as he doesn't get wet. <gasps> there he is. He went out in the rain. And the regular color marker's coming off. And look at his face. Uh-oh. I hope he doesn't see a mirror anytime soon. Anyway, like I said, this book was written by Robert Munch and illustrated by Elaine Desputo, and I'm reading it with permission from Access Copyright on behalf of the publisher. And the publisher is Enic Press, which is in Toronto, Canada. So I actually wanted to read a different book, but I didn't know if I was allowed because it wasn't on my list of approved authors and stuff so I'm gonna have to ask uh, I'm gonna have to write a letter or send an email and see if I'm allowed to read it because now there's a lot of rules and stuff so I thought today we could do some well see the book I was going to read was about butterflies and caterpillars so I thought we could do some butterfly caterpillar stuff so I got a stick from outside because you could use any stick. You could use like a paint stick or, or a plastic stick, but I wanted to make it look like it was from outside. So I got the stick and it broke. So I taped it, I first glued it, then I taped it. So I'm just gonna color the tape brown. And this is not dark enough. Mamma mia. Um, it's a little darker. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I can always put something over it because I know what we're going to do and that's what I'll do. I'll put something over it. Okay, so. So at one end of the stick, I used a glue, uh, like the hot glue gun, and I glued some fake leaves. These are just fabric leaves. Um, but you could probably tape them on or depending what kind of stick you use, uh, maybe have a grown-up staple it on for you or whatever. And I thought we would talk about butterflies. Butterflies... Most people know that butterflies don't start out at butterflies. Do you know what they start out as? Before they're a caterpillar, before they're a caterpillar, they are an egg. So a, a butterfly lays an egg un, and, and, and puts it under the leaf. So if birds or Animals that would eat it are flying above. They won't see it. It's stuck under here. So I have a little bit of clay. I'm just going to make a little egg here. I think it'll stick. I'm going to stick it there. Am I? I am. Ah, there you go. See? It, it's You can see it if you turned upside down, but otherwise you, you can't. So the predators won't see it, so it should survive. And then out of the egg comes a caterpillar. So, so many ways to make caterpillars. I like making them with pom-poms because you can have like little, little different colors and different sizes. But since I have my plasticine here, I'm going to make this one out of plasticine. 
So the egg hatches, and that's when the caterpillar comes. And that's what's in the egg. It's a little caterpillar. It's kind of funny when you think about it because caterpillars don't look like butterflies at all, do they? But then you used to be a bald, toothless baby, and now look at you. You don't look like that anymore, and I like how you don't wear diapers anymore. So I just made a little wiener to be my caterpillar, but I can use um, little pencils and give him a little face. I think I'll make him happy. Happy to be out of an egg. See his eyeballs? I poked eyeballs in there with the pencil. Give him a little happy face. And mm, there we go. So he's my caterpillar. So I have the first part of the butterfly's life cycle, which is the egg. And out of the egg comes the caterpillar. So I'll put him here, him or her, right there. Da, 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 da. Now, the caterpillar eats and eats and eats and eats. He has to eat a lot of stuff because he uh, he's going to hibernate for a little while, but he's not going to hibernate like a bear in a cave. He's going to hibernate in something else. Do you know what it's called when a when a caterpillar goes into hiding before it becomes a butterfly? It is a cocoon, a cocoon or a chrysalis, some people call it. Um, I thought, I used to think that it was a cocoon if it was a moth or a chrysalis if it was a butterfly. But when I went to the butterfly conservatory, they said, no, you could use either word for each of them. And they look kind of off white so, and they hang off the branch. So I just used a bit of uh, pipe cleaner, but you could use a twist tie from a garbage bag or anything to make it drop down or a piece of wool. And then I'm just going to put this masking tape around it. And so it kind of looks like that. So we have, there's four parts of a life cycle of a butterfly, the egg, the caterpillar, part two, the cocoon or chrysalis, part three, and now the fun part, what comes out of here? A butterfly. And I love making butterflies because they can be so beautiful. So I learned this. Um, butterflies' wings have to be symmetrical, which means they have to be the same as each other. Okay, so we're going to make a butterfly. I'm going to fold my paper in half like a hamburger. And trying to think what a butterfly looks like so I think its wing goes up like that well mine is <laughs> and so I think I'll cut some round stuff off there then I think I'll go to the corners and I think I'll do a smaller bottom leaf uh, wing and then a bigger top one and then when I open it Hmm, that'll do, won't it? So, oh, I forgot to get my clipboard. Clipboard. I'm just gonna pause this for a second. Okay, got my handy dandy clipboard. I'm gonna put the dark paper to set a background, and then I'm going to put my butterfly on top. So symmetrical. So if my face was cut down the center, you could say, oh, her face is symmetrical because she has an eyeball here and an eyeball there and a nostril here and a nostril there and half a mouth here, half a mouth there, an ear on each side. So if I decide my butterfly, well, I'm going to decorate mine with shapes because we've been talking about shapes. And this week we've learned about a rhombus and a rhombus is what we used to call a diamond shape, but now that 
like old people like me used to call it a diamond shape, but now they call it a rhombus. So I'm going to put an orange rhombus right up here on this wing. Well, see, it's funny because the lid was orange, but I see the marker is actually red. So because I know uh, the wings have to be symmetrical and I put a red rhombus here, I also have to put one here. And so, there we go. They're not exactly the same because I'm upside down. Oh, I'm not upside down. My paper's upside down. I don't think you want me hanging upside down. Though I am kind of batty. <laughs> That's hanging upside down, right? Okay. So what other shapes have we learned about? Okay. I know we've done squares. So I'm going to look at the colors over here. Oh, I know a lot of people like purple. So I'm going to put a purple square down here. And if I put a purple square on this wing, I know I have to put one on this wing because they have to be symmetrical. The same on both sides. And I like to use markers. Like sometimes you can't use them because they'll soak through to the other side of what you're doing. But in this case, it doesn't matter. So there are some shapes. Uh, what other shapes do we know? Pink's my favorite color. I'm going to do a pink mm, triangle. I'm going to do it at the bottom of the, the wing, and I'm going to do an upside down, kind of sideways, kind of wonky triangle. See? So now I'll do one here. I wonder why that noise just happened. Okay. So I've done so, uh, what else? Mm, I think yellow is my second favorite color. This is a really bright yellow. So I think I'm going to use it to just do kind of an edge around the wings, all the way around. And I can do it on the other side as well. Did we do rectangles? I think we did rectangles. So I will do a rectangle on here. What color rectangle? What color? What color? Oh, I know. I'm going to use green for Landon. And I'm going to put a green rectangle right here. I think this butterfly is going to be pretty uh, geometrical. It's going to have a lot of geometry shapes on it. So. Doop -doop -doop. You know what comes next? Gotta put one over here. Might be a bit big. So once I've done the bigger eye-catching shapes and colors, then I can use just little colors and stuff to go around uh, the to fill in the blank. But I'm still knowing they have to be symmetrical. So if I have this dark pink purple and I decide to go like this and put some dots down there, then I'm also going to put some dots down here. Okay, so some people could spend hours and hours decorating this, but I'm not going to because I'm going to show you how we're going to finish our life cycle of a butterfly now. So I'm going to get my stick. So we said we'd start with the egg, because that's how a butterfly starts. Then the egg hatches into a cute little caterpillar. Then he eats and eats and eats all kinds of milkweed until he goes into a cocoon or chrysalis. And then he comes out as a butterfly. So 
I'm going to attach this to the end of the stick and I'll show you why. So I have all kinds of different kinds of tape. I've made these before with paint stirring sticks and they're really flat. So when I use those, I can actually just staple my butterfly on. But this is a real actual branch. So I don't think a staple would work too well. So I'm taping it on. And actually, because you're gonna see both sides, you could actually, um, you could actually decorate both sides. So if it's a marker that soaks through, you could decorate it using the back of the other side's decoration. So now look what you've made. You've made a butterfly. And we've taped the stick on the back. So the nice thing is, say you're playing with this and your little brother or sister says, hey, what's that? Why do you have all that stuff on your butterfly? You can say to him, this is the life cycle of a butterfly. And you can teach your little brother. Your dad might have forgotten. Your mom might have forgotten. Your grandma might be so old like me, she's forgotten. So you can remind her, grandma, do you remember that butterfly started with an egg? And she might be like, oh, yes, I think I do know that. That's how I talk, because I'm old. And then you could say, Grandma, do you know what comes next? And maybe she'll say a caterpillar, and you can go, ding, ding, ding. Yes, it does. That's why this is here. And then you can tell her, do you know what, what happens to that caterpillar after it eats for a couple of weeks? And she may or may not know that it goes into a cocoon or chrysalis. But everyone knows it comes out a butterfly, doesn't it? doesn't it? So this can be fun. It's something you can play with outside. And uh, it's pretty. It's the type of thing that the more work and detail you put into it, the better your results will be. Like you could put gold, you could put stickers, you could put jewels. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I had some pipe cleaner left over. I was actually gonna put that on the end so my butterfly would have antennae. Na, 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 na. I think I might be ripping them a bit, but I just want to show you. And I can curl down the end of each antennae, or I could put a bead on it if I want it. There. All right. Does that look awesome? I think that looks awesome. All right, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.